All right, today is May 21, 2020, and this is the meeting of the Kubernetes Storage Special Interest Group. As a reminder, this meeting is public uh, and uh, recorded and posted on YouTube. Um, the agenda doc is shared in the meeting invite. Uh, if there's anything that you want to talk about, whether it's PRs that need attention, design reviews, or anything else, feel free to add it to the agenda and we'll get it get to it towards the end of the meeting. First up, we're gonna go over the planning spreadsheet where we're keeping track of the work that the SIG is doing for the 1.19 release. Um, the feature freeze deadline for this release just passed on Tuesday, so we're gonna wanna get an update to see which caps made it, which caps didn't make it, which ones are getting exceptions. Uh, and so let's jump right into it. Uh, first item that we have is CSI online offline resizing volume expansion fixing issues. Hamant, uh, can you provide an update on that? Yes, so <laughs> the recovery from expansion failure cap got merged and uh, that's I think item below. And uh, the CSI uh, for online offline we have uh, we have a consensus in CSI community. Yesterday we had a call. I'm updating the CSI spec, and the plan is basically to uh, deprecate the support for a plugin's ability to declare that it uh, the uh, in the offline and online expansion. So plugins can support online ex on offline expansion without declaring the in in the vo get volume capabilities call, and they can return just the volume use error. So I'm making the spec change for that. <laughs> then we also are going to handle the read-only uh, expansion, and uh, if a volume does not driver cannot support read-only expansion, then it will return an error. Uh, I already have a spec change for that in the in the in the CSI. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you for all your hard work on that. And looks like both of these are covered, uh, and I'm going to mark both of them as started. So the Next. recovery from resize, we are going to move it to alpha, not not beta. Uh, right. So it says targets. Okay. Does that look good? Yeah. Cool. Uh, next item is the CSI storage proxy for Windows. Uh, Deep, Michelle, Jing, anyone have an update on this? KK, maybe. I don't think any of them are here, um, but they're holding regular meetings, I think, every Monday um, to make pro progress on the Windows work. I guess I'm not sure in terms of cap. I don't remember seeing a Windows beta cap. Mm. Okay. So that might that might have fallen through the cracks, um, uh, because it's all out of tree anyway. But I guess we'll see. One of my coworkers mentioned he was working on the Windows Postpath driver. Um, yeah. So there's definitely work going on uh, on Windows. I think we might have missed something in the process um, in terms of getting a cap updated and and tracked by the release team. Um, we'll have to follow up on that, I think. But, but what, what, what do we expect to change in core Kubernetes as a result of it moving from alpha to beta? Is there a feature gate? Is there a documentation Yeah, exactly. Change? I don't think there's this a change. A, an announcement we make? I, I think it's really just like, yeah, I think it's just documentation. Um, there isn't actually any code. Um, there's no code that's gated in Kubernetes core. So it might be easy to get it in as an exception if we need to. Okay, uh, we'll follow yeah, up. Yeah, possibly. I'll, I'll follow up with them 
Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, next item is snapshot fix issues. Uh, this is for the snapshots feature. We're not moving it uh, to GA just yet. There are a number of issues that uh, Xing and Sean Chen identified, and they have been fixing. Any updates on that? Yeah, so we continue to do the bug fixes. So I just did my uh, uh, a bug fix to fix the Riku issue. That one just got merged. I think Shan Chen has a PR that is in out for a while on the metrics. We'd like to get that one in as well. There are a couple of others. Uh, we are trying to cut a release with uh, some of the changes that we are working on. Cool. Thank you, Shane. Uh, next item is non-recursive volume ownership. And we have Helmont or Yan. Any updates on that? Yeah. So the cap got merged, but because uh, cap was merged for beta targeting, but later on when reviewing the SL Linux cap, we oh, wanted yeah. to <coughs> we wanted to reconsider merging those two options. So we are not going to do anything in this release, maybe other than fix bugs if somebody reports it. So although we targeted PETA, the cap was not, and uh, an address updated and everything, but we decided to kind of put it on hold until uh, implement SLNX as well, and then we'll consider it, how to merge okay. these two things together. And so do we want to change the status of this to design for the quarter or just switch it back uh, to alpha? Yeah, I just switch it back to alpha. I just believe it because it's already merged, implemented. Uh, like previous quarter, we implemented is alpha. So, okay. And uh, do you want to update? This do we still before? have? Do we still have more work to do here in terms of um, like preparing this for beta in terms of like tests and metrics and stuff? Yeah, we have some work we could we could do for like upgrade, downgrade, and, and matrix thing that we decided to add for recursive. Uh, how much time it takes for the, this to happen? So, yeah, we can do that. I will keep create issues for that. Let me make a note for it myself. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you, Amon. Next item is Azure CSI migration. Um, anyone have an update on that? I'm gonna go ahead and move that down with the other migrations and we'll come back maybe by the end of the um, call. Yeah. Go ahead, Michelle. All right, we'll come back to it. I don't know, we can wait till we, yeah. Okay. Uh, next item is SE Linux recursive permission handling. Uh, Jan, any updates on this? I have a cap merged, but unfortunately I missed the... Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. We can hear you. Hello. Okay, so cap is, cap is merged, but I... I didn't update the issue in time, so it slipped from the release. I filled the exception. I got plus one from you and from Xing, and I'm not sure what's the next process. I think we just have to wait for a response from the release team. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, cool. Sounds good, thank you. Uh, next item is file permission handling for Windows. Um, somebody on the Windows team presumably would be looking into this. Last time we had no update. Uh, my guess is no update this time either. Okay, let's skip that item. Uh, next up is file permission handling in projected service account volume. Uh, any updates on this?
looks like the last status update was the PR was merged and there was a question about whether there was any follow-up needed here. Yeah, I think the the cap and the PR to implement it have both merged. Okay, so this may be done. Uh, should we mark it as complete or wait until we have more confirmation on the status? I right, think we can mark it as complete. Okay. All right, next item is CSI entry read-only handling. We were looking for someone to own this issue and Humble uh, kindly agreed to jump on it. Uh, Humble, are you on the call by any chance? Yeah, um, he, he understands. Uh, but yet to make some progress on this, uh, was busy with some of the other action items and PRs. Uh, we'll get on this soon, uh, uh, Sad. But uh, I don't have any progress yet. Well, cool. thanks, Humble. Next item is issues related to assuming mount volumes are mount points. Uh, Andy, are you on the call for an update here? Okay, anyone else have an update on this? Okay. We'll, we'll um, I think this is actually waiting on me to decide if um, we want to actually merge this for 119, given that it has the potential to break drivers. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, is that something you want to discuss with the wider community or just take it offline? Um, I think I, I think it'd be better to discuss this offline. I'll okay. send out an email. Sounds good. Next item is storage pools, which encompasses a number of features, capacity, uh, inline ephemeral volumes. And I think that's the two features that ended up getting the cap app approved for. Uh, Patrick, are you on the line for an update on this? Is it worth splitting this into two? Yeah, that might be a good idea. There is already an item, uh, row 32, generalized ephemeral volume, so that one is tracking the second. Okay, so let's move that up and instead of generalize, we call this uh, generic or PVC inline volumes, PVC inline ephemeral volumes. And say kept merged. Okay, and Patrick's working on that, and this is going to be alpha. And then storage pools, we're just going to change this to storage capacity tracking. And that kept was also approved. Okay, so I think we're on track for both of those items. Um, and I guess their third item was, um, what were we calling it? Uh, failure domains, uh, spreading over failure domains. And that one, I guess we've started, uh, and it would be a design this quarter. 
and I'm not sure if Patrick is the right person to work on it, or is it Shing? Yeah, so probably, yeah, put my name. I will work with uh, Patrick, but I think it's basically building on top of the storage capacity thing. Those are the three things that fell out of the storage pool design. Then we have the volume group API, uh, which is also designed this quarter. Um, any updates on that? Right, so volume group, right, there are two part of it. Uh, so the spreading part, so it's going to be, uh, we're going to be looking at that together with this uh, uh, row number 15, right, spreading over field domain. Um, and for that cap, we reviewed it uh, two weeks back. Uh, so I got some comments. I need to update that and also need to schedule a review meeting for the spreading part. Okay. Uh, so, your comments and schedule a follow up meeting. Uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, next up are the CSI drivers that are common and owned by the SIG at the moment. Uh, you have NFS, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, and Flex. And the goal is to have somebody in the SIG take ownership of these drivers, or if we can't find an owner, to deprecate the driver. And so the goal with Fiber Channel and Flex is to deprecate uh, with NFS and iSCSI. We were able to find owners. Uh, it looks like for IS, for NFS, the status here is that this was complete. The work was complete. Is that right, Michelle? Yes. Um, we have successfully revamped the NFS driver to be mostly up to date. Um, so... That is good. Um, I still need to follow up with the folks who volunteer to help with iSCSI and sort of get them um, started on revamping the iSCSI driver. Okay, cool. Looks like good progress. And then for the two deprecated ones? Uh, um, that's just on me to actually deprecate them. I haven't yeah. been able to get around to, the, to it. Yeah, it's not super high priority, so understandable. We'll mark that as not started for now. Uh, next up is this external storage repository, which was where all the experimental projects for storage uh, initially were hosted. And a lot of them ended up becoming kind of being used by a lot of people. Uh, and the repository itself was a mess. It doesn't have its own releases or anything like that. One of the projects that was hosted in here was the external provisioner, uh, uh, just the, the core external provisioner. Uh, that has since been moved out. And uh, we want to deprecate that repo along with the, the organization, Kubernetes Incubator, altogether. So before we do that, we want to make sure anything that's in that repo that people find useful gets moved out somewhere else uh, before it is deprecated. And so, so far we've identified three uh, provisioners that needed to be moved out. Uh, the Gluster FS one, NFS, and the NFS client provisioner. And those are in, uh, in progress in terms of being moved out. Once those are complete, we're going to proceed with the deprecation of external storage. If there's anybody on the call who thinks there's something else in external storage that they depend on and need that moved out, please raise the flag as soon as possible uh, before it gets deprecated. Uh, so let's so go the, ahead. Uh -huh. the, the items that are moving, where are they moving to? 
they're moving to Kubernetes SIGs or uh, the CSI repo, the Kubernetes CSI repo. I think in this case, all three of these are moving to Kubernetes SIGs repo. Okay, uh, so, so there's a new home. We just have to forward. decide yeah. what to move there. All right. And so let's get status updates on these. Uh, Gluster FS, Humble. Yeah, uh, so last week I got the PR ready for review with the required or initially planned item SAS, uh, which also makes use of the release tools repo for build process, etc. Um, got an initial review from Michelle. Uh, even though the PR is not yet merged, I would say it's pretty much done and rest of the improvements can be follow PRs. So that has made good progress and it's almost done. Awesome. Nice. Thank you, Humble. And the other two are NFS. Karen, are you on the line by any chance? Yes, sir. So I have raised the draft PR on the NFS provisional, got some comments. I'm working through them. And I have some pending items with respect to refactoring the E2E -E test. So should be able to make progress uh, in this couple of weeks. Perfect. And is that uh, the same for both or just for one? Right. So the uh, what I just gave is for the NFS provisional. I mm -hmm. have yet to start on the NFS client provisional. Talk Makes sense. With uh, Michelle on that offline. All right, thank you very much, Karen. And so we'll mark that one as started. And then the status update for the overall deprecation is we want to wait for the previous items to complete first before we proceed with that. Uh, and again, warning to anybody who depends on anything in this repo, please, please raise a flag if there's something in there that hasn't been migrated that you depend on. So far, the things that we identified are these three provisioners plus the core provisioner library. All right, next item is uh, items that are co-owned by this SIG uh, along with other SIGs. Uh, what I'm gonna do is push those down to kind of collect them at the bottom uh, and go over them last after the migration work. Okay, uh, and instead we're going to jump to volume snapshot namespace transfer. Uh, Hi. This is a design. Go ahead. Yeah, no update this week. Um, I hope to get back to it next week. I apologize for the lack of progress. No worries. Thank you. And uh, hopefully we get a status update next time. Next item is CSI volume health. Um, this was uh, also, uh, how, did the cap for this get end up getting approved? Yeah, yes, okay. the cap, yeah, so updated the cap, added those uh, new criteria, so yeah, that got merged. Um, so, uh, so it's a work is in progress, so Nick has PR, uh, been reviewing it, he has been updating it. I'm waiting for him to add a unit test and also there's somebody else helping with uh, uh, implementing the same mock driver. Okay. So, and then also we're waiting for the CA size back 1.3, then we could uh, update based on that. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Shane. Next item here is generic uh, data source, uh, populator data source. Um, um, so, yeah, the, the, this one is not happening in 119. I hope okay. to get to it in 120. I, the, the thing I will say is um, I would like input from Andrew Large. Is he here on the call? I don't believe he is, but yeah, okay. it would be good to get his input. Yeah, I, I've reached out to him before and not gotten a response, so I got to try harder to, to get a hold of him because I think he's the one who would be most interested in the outputs of this. Yeah. Other than me. Okay. Uh, next up is the object storage API. John or Jeff, any updates on that? Hey, Saad. Yeah, we've, uh, I think, cemented the, the many into one binding from the uh, user side to the cluster scoped object. And I've got a slide deck for the uh, meeting after this one to propose 
some different ideas about uh, credential minting and how we can incorporate that into the uh, design. Cool. And if anyone's interested in uh, looking at the Kubernetes object storage API, uh, those design meetings are happening now. Um, like John said, that meeting is going to immediately follow this meeting uh, on the same uh, Zoom. So feel free to attend if you're interested. Uh, there's two parts to this. One is the Kubernetes API, and the second it is a API similar to CSI. Uh, being called currently COSI, the Container Object Storage Interface, or COSI. Uh, so feel free to attend that and uh, provide your input. So, uh, is sorry, COSI let me... the, is COSI the official pronunciation? <laughs> that, that, that's what we're going with. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, let, sorry, let me add too that we also have a new Google group uh, for the uh, COSI working group. So uh, questions and comments and threads can be posted there, link in the chat. Cool, I think it might be good to do the official work required to create a work group, uh, which I think includes updating the community page and all of that, uh, so it becomes easier to discover. But, uh, Great, okay, I'll uh, take a look at that. Cool. Uh, next item is CSI ephemeral volumes data. And uh, let's see, this is, this is different from the new generic inline ephemeral volume that's being proposed up here. This is an existing API using CSI. The big difference between this API and the new proposed API is that uh, this API is inline, doesn't create any PVC objects. It just calls out directly to CSI to provision for CSI drivers that support it versus the new inline ephemeral volume design above is proposing reusing the PVC uh, framework that already exists and instead tying the life cycle of those PVCs to the pod. So when the pod is created, the PVC is created, and when the pod is deleted, the PVC is automatically deleted. So effectively, you end up with ephemeral behavior but you get to reuse all the infrastructure that exists for PVCs and storage class like topology and so on. So it be, ends up being much more powerful, but it's a little bit more heavy weight in terms of provisioning. Uh, therefore, this other uh, existing ephemeral inline volume uh, for CSI continues to coexist. Ideally, we want to kind of merge their uh, APIs a little bit as we move forward so that it becomes easy to discover and use. Uh, and uh, that's all I'll say about that. Patrick, uh, or anybody want to give an update on this one? Jan, would you happen to know what the status here is? Uh, the status is that the cap got merged. So it's on track. Okay. Uh, this one, I don't think there was any change, right? Is this Sorry, merged? This I is thought this. Sorry, volume. Uh, there is no change. It's beta. It's remaining beta. I am not sure if there's any work planned actually. I think, given the other generic ephemeral ones, we might want to revisit if we want to keep on pursuing this one right. or how we want to evolve it okay i like simplicity of this api you don't need to implement anything just publish and it follows the flexi yeah, I think I can see the benefit of both. Uh, the only thing I would like to see is make sure that the APIs kind of converge. I like that there's a new ephemeral volume source with the other uh, cap. So if we could tuck this inside of that and it becomes an either or, I think that would be a good place to end up. Uh, so it's less confusing for users. Okay. That's a good option. 
All right, next it's item. It's still a little weird because like the users have to understand which driver supports which mode. Yeah, so that's that's the thing I think is worth discussing. You have the same issue with flex drivers. Some of them support provisioning, some of them don't. Yeah, and arguably the same issue exists with CSI drivers as well, because you could have drivers that support dynamic provisioning and ones that don't, but Usually the end user doesn't have to worry about that. It's the uh, cluster administrator who does. So I guess that's how it's slightly different. Anyway, we don't have to discuss that here. Um, we can uh, take that discussion offline. Next item is FS group support in CSI. Uh, so last status update here was kept was opened. Uh, Christian Huffman, do you have a, any updates on this? Yes, the KEP was approved and merged. Awesome. Cool, thank you. Next item, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark that as started. And that's going to alpha this quarter, right? Correct. Okay, cool. Uh, immutable secrets and config maps. Uh, this is, I guess, co-owned with SIG scalability, so we should actually move it to the bottom. Okay, we'll come back to that. Uh, next up are the CSI migration items. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, CSI is kind of the future of the Kubernetes volume API, but before we did CSI, there were a number of volume plugins that were in tree, meaning their code was built into the core of Kubernetes, as you're probably well aware. Um, there is a big push within the uh, Kubernetes community to push any uh, cloud provider specific code out of the core of Kubernetes. And so this includes uh, the volume code. And so for the volume code, our plan is to provide a common mechanism that allows for this code to be handled by a CSI driver while the API is maintained. So the, the, the thing with Kubernetes is that we have a very strict deprecation policy and backwards compatibility policy uh with the api and all of these old entry volume plugins actually exposed bits of api which makes them very difficult to deprecate and so ideally what we want is users can continue to use those apis referencing entry but silently internally we redirect that uh, and have it handled by a csi driver that's installed on the cluster and once that mechanism is foolproof and ready and, and working, we can begin to delete the entry code while still maintaining the API for these old entry volume plugins. Um, so the core code that enables this migration, the silent migration was uh, merged uh, and uh, is beta as of, uh, I believe, Q4 last year. And since then, the remaining work has been going through all the cloud providers and adding a bit of code that is specific for each of the cloud providers to hook into this migration. And so the work we're tracking here is for each one of the cloud providers to uh, see how far they have gotten. Um, so let's start with uh, vSphere CSI migration. Um, Divian, are you on the line? Uh, yes. So we have the PR out and uh, I have the review comments from the Jonathan and internally VMware has reviewed this PR. Cool. Thank you, Divian. Uh, next item is Azure. Um, Andy, I don't think is on the line. Does anyone else happen to have an update here? 
Um, I know Andy has been actively working on this. Um, he's been sending PRs to fix various bugs and stuff. Okay. All right, thank you. And then next up is GCE. Um, any updates on that, Michelle? No. Okay. We already have a uh, migration uh, hook for GCE, don't we? Yeah, yeah, it's already in beta and there's already tests running against it, but um, in terms of making progress towards GA, I don't think we will have time to actively work on this, this cycle. So it's already in beta, not moving to GA this quarter. So let's change the goal here from, and, oops, I updated the wrong one. Change that to GA and then remove it from this cycle. And we'll punt moving to GA to next quarter. And, uh, and then the next item is AWS. Uh, we were trying to confirm who was working on this, possibly Matt. Uh, did we get an update on that? I have not heard anything um, regarding this, but I also don't think anybody has reached out to Matt to see if he will be able to work on this. So hopefully we can make progress on that soon. And then finally, we have uh, OpenStack CSI migration. And uh, I think John had an update here uh, last time that this was OpenStack CSI migration for Cinder only. Uh, any other updates? Okay, we'll have to sync up with John offline and get a status update on those two. Uh, and then finally, we have these cross SIG items uh, where we have more than one SIG interested in it and uh, possibly people from our SIG or from a different SIG that are working on it. Uh, first item here is SIG. Oh, sorry, SIG. Saad. Uh -huh. uh, one more thing before we move on. I believe um, Humble is going to work on uh, Ceph migration. Is that right? or RBD? Yeah, yeah, that's right, uh, um, Chef. Sorry, I was on mute. Is it uh, CephFS or CephRBD, or both? CephFS, CephFS and RBD, both. OK. Awesome. So let's go ahead and that real quick and have you started or not yet yet to start okay and do you plan to move it to alpha first or bait directly to beta better to be on alpha i believe alpha. Okay. and it's going to work on that and cool all right we'll start keeping track of that from uh from this point forward um, there was no caps that were needed for any of these, right? Since they're just extending the existing migration cap effectively. Okay, uh, let's move on to the SIGs. Uh, so SIG scalability, uh, immutable secrets and config maps. Uh, we were not able to get an update on this last time. Uh, I don't have an update on this this time. Does anybody else? Uh. I think this is done. Okay. Uh, I think the cap has merged and also the PR to flip the feature flag has also merged. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and mark that as done then.
Thank you, Michelle. And the next four items are co-owned with SIG apps. Uh, so we have uh, Dave who agreed to work on this. Last status update was uh, KK was gonna work with Dave on this. Uh, anybody have any updates on this? I don't see either KK or Dave on the line. Um, KK sent me an update um just before the meeting he said he's he's working on both of the items assigned to him okay i think one of them he said one of them the the cap didn't get through but he'll still be actively working on both of the items okay so i'm did he say which one is which uh let me double check Um, I think, oh no, um, okay, none of them, I see, both of them did not make the cap deadline, but he'll be working on both of them. Okay, so we should switch them to design for this quarter. So we'll call that design, we'll call that design, call that started, started, KK. Uh, so Kep did not merge. I think indicates he. Okay, and so we'll just put both of his items together. And next item is the execution hook for application snapshot. Uh, Shing, you wanna provide an update on that one? Yeah, so we had a meeting with uh, folks from Signode and Tim. Um, so uh, we didn't uh, reach consensus. Signode had a lot of concerns uh, about this. Uh, I think the main concern is that they want to be able to tell whether uh, a comment uh, run in the container is really successful, really has achieved the results that it intended to be. So uh, there are like a few uh, alternative approaches uh, being discussed. One is to add a probe uh, in addition to the current design. Uh, so I put together a draft in yesterday's data protection one group meeting. We reviewed that. Um, so I think I got a lot of concerns from folks saying that why you want to do a probe. Basically, it's like you don't trust people who are uh, writing the script for your first, uh, um, basically, you initially have to uh, send this uh, command to container waiting for the results and then you have to probe it again to <laughs> make sure that it's really, it has really done what it, it meant to be. So I think, um, yeah, so I think we still need to uh, have <laughs> more discussions on that. So I also pinned the team, ask him to take a look, but this is mainly trying to address signals concerns, right? So this is one one thing that they mentioned. So there were a couple of others. So need more discussions. Cool, so this is an area of active discussion and development. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Thank you, Shane. And last item is the Kubernetes Utils mount library. Uh, we wanna move it to a dedicated repo, uh, preferably a staging repo. Uh, I saw the request come in for creating a new staging directory. Uh, Michelle, any updates on that or Jan? Um, the uh, org issue is open um, to create a new staging repo for that. Um, I think it's just waiting on someone to actually uh, merge it and do, do the work on that. Perfect. That has started as well. 
All right, uh, we are done with status updates. We're gonna go back to the agenda doc and we can jump into these discussions. First up, we have uh, Divian and Jonathan uh, here to discuss the vSphere CSI migration. Um, go ahead. Hi, yes. Uh, so yeah, we were uh, discussing on, on the PR itself uh, and I thought it would be easier to have uh, a chat here about it. So I think uh, the main concern is that the current implementation uh, for the vSphere CSI migration is um, uh, will only work for some uh, scenarios. Uh, and that uh, you know existing Kubernetes clusters uh, could uh, break uh, if if they're not uh, in the right scenario. Uh, what scenarios would that be? Um, so uh, storage classes. Um, the two things being uh, deprecated are uh, inline uh, storage policy, which is putting all the storage policy parameters in Kubernetes instead of into uh, vSphere. And the other one is to reference a specific data store by name. So to uh, make sure I understand this correctly. Both of these options were possible when you did the entry storage class, but are not possible with CSI. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, Divian did provide an explanation for these on the PR. I just wanted to make sure that we synced up about it. And is there a sense for how many users might be using either of these? I need to get a detail from our PM regarding this. Uh, the thing is, uh, how, how we introduce this parameter is uh, like, let me tell you the. the Initially, when we started, uh, we were provisioning the volume on the shared data store only. Then we thought, okay, let us provide an option to uh, select a data store. So we added a storage class parameter called data store name. And then we thought, now we can use the storage policy. So we added a storage policy and deprecated a data store. So uh, as we added a new feature, we kept deprecating the older parameter. And those parameters are, are no longer supported in the CSI driver which is now using a different set of apis which is using a cloud native storage apis and previous driver entry driver was using a vSphere apis directly and there were a lot of hacks and uh, we were basically a team of small team two or three uh, persons working on that uh, and now this is uh, uh, and uh, like, like a bu project within the vmware so uh, in that project we have not planned to support those older parameter and it is not in line with the other offerings that VMware has. So, um, so users can the, the those still configure data data store in the cloud configuration, or that's also not supported. So, data store name is not durable. So, we have changed it to data store URL. So that is change. And inline storage policy uh, we were supplying because we were not having the support for the. Uh, SPVM in the Go Mommy. So we were using VDisk Manager API to supply this additional parameter. But now we have a full fledged support in the Go Mommy to support SPVM based provisioning. So we have deprecated that uh, raw vSAN based inline policy parameters. So the customers who are having, who have multiple storage classes with probably referring to different data stores, is there a migration path for them? Yes, so volume will be migrated. Uh, there will not be any issue. Uh, but the new volume that you are going to create with the in3 YAML, in that we will be dropping those parameters with the message that these parameters are no longer supported. So basically, uh, all inline uh, vCN raw policy parameter, data store name parameter, 
they will be dropped. So what we'll be supporting in the driver is storage policy name, data store URL, and uh, a CSI storage KDS IO FS type parameter. And just to make sure that I understand, so if you have a storage class that uses one of these parameters and migration happens and they try to do a provisioning, will the provisioning fail? Uh, provisioning will not fail. Provisioning will simply drop the unknown parameter, which is not known to the newer APIs, and uh, provisioning will be successful, basically. Okay, so how does it... But I guess, like, those settings are ignored and it'll use the default settings? Yes. So data store default policy will be applied. And I think while uh, implementing a new feature for storage policy name, we published this in the PR that we'll be going to deprecate all these parameters. So we need to collect the data, like how many customers are still using this older feature. Because as we added this feature, we kept deprecating those parameters. When did we deprecate? I guess uh, one question I have is, Sorry. you mentioned, say like, um, there's a data store URL now. Is that sub is a data store URL supported in the in tree storage class parameter? No, it was not. Supported. Like, could could is there like a easy migration path where users could say update their in tree storage class to use the new supported parameters, and then have that be translated over to CSI once migration is flipped on. So that is, we can do that, but the data store name is like highly, you can change it, it's not durable. So, um, so after provisioning a volume, if someone changes the name of the data store, it can break the entire vSphere cloud provider. So that is why we no longer want to support uh, providing a URL or a name in the driver. So even for the data store URL, we are not targeting to keep it for uh, future. So the way the user should provision volume is using the storage policy name. And storage policy can decide the location of the volume and where it needs to be provisioned. Is there a like middle ground where um, you kind of have a invisible set of parameters that you support for migration that are not officially published? And in order to use them, you know, you need to set some parameter that says I am migration code or something like that. And then you can continue to pass along these old parameters and they will be respected in order to allow for continuity. Uh, and then for new kind of users of CSI, you don't publish any of this and you just say here are the new set that yes. are allowed we thought about it but the thing is we need to change the driver and allow these uh, parameters in the storage class so uh, since the code is open source anybody can refer the code and try to use those parameters with the newer workload in the csi uh, but the intention of those parameters is just for migration but nobody can restrict the user to use those parameter in their csi storage class so that is the reason we don't want to uh, put any migration related parameters so I just want to um, add one sort of uh, detail, sort of the, the intention for CSI migration, like uh, you know, CSI came out before there was CSI migration and, and a lot of drivers could offer new and improved features in CSI that were not available in Intree. Uh, the purpose of migration was not to bring the new and improved features to the legacy drivers. Migration was just trying to bring the same level of functionality from the legacy drivers to function uh, using CSI. Um, so, I, for example, you mentioned the data store name is not durable, but at any uh, uh, anybody who's using the legacy driver today, if they change their data store name, they're going to break their cluster. Um, so, as while the data store name is still correct it can be resolved to a URL. Um, and that URL is durable, as I understand it. Yes. Um, uh, but yeah, the, I don't think, we're not, we're not trying to solve these. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the, the migration path for existing volumes, 
it looks like the driver does have to rely on data store name because it's reading the file path from the legacy PB spec. Mm -hmm. We will be able to uh, migrate the existing pre-provisioned volume. So let's say you have a storage class, you have provisioned the volume using the data store URL volume is provisioned in that data store. We'll be able to migrate them to the CSI and CSI driver will handle the uh, attach, detach, delete workflow. Um, but the new so, one that you're going to create with your uh, older YAML, that will drop these parameters. That is the main I I agree, and that that matches what I understand from reading the the PR. Um, but it, so it looks like if I provision a volume uh, before migration, then it will have file path and square brackets and a data store name, and then the VMDK path. And then when we turn on migration, that string gets sent to the CSI driver. Yes. We'll then have to resolve the data store by name, which could fail if the data store was renamed. Yes. And my my point is that that's uh, that's okay, because that's the same limitation that the legacy driver had. So, so that 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 is another issue. The thing is, what we are uh, saying is that we should allow provisioning a new volumes with the older YAMLs and. We should not drop this parameter, but the newer APIs that we are using in the CNS that doesn't support. So let's say recent raw policy, we will never be able to support uh, with the CNS APIs. Uh, and uh, regarding the data store, that is also not in line with our plan for the uh, other features. So uh, we cannot basically add a new parameter in the CSI driver to support this. So what are the current options uh, going forward that are being proposed? The current option is pre-provisioned volumes will be migrated. New volumes cannot be created uh, with honoring all old uh, entry parameters because those parameters are no longer supported with the newer uh, APIs. And they are not in line and they have a lot of issues. Like, they, like I said, it's not durable and such thing. it can break the entire setup so those kind of parameters we are no longer supporting so we will be able to migrate existing workload but the new workload has to be provisioned using a csi driver let's and if you are using on the supported parameter which is present in the csi driver you can you can use uh, still use the older csi older yaml file so, so, so i want to push back a little bit on that and here's why i, I think it touches on what Jonathan was saying, which is the intention of the migration, right? The, the kind of ideal scenario for migration is it happens silently and the user doesn't know and doesn't have to change anything. And so uh, it, they should continue to use the existing API objects untouched and internally we should automatically handle uh translating that to csi in a way that they effectively get the same behavior as before and so when we flip the switch for migration uh and effect eventually when we delete the code for entry users should not notice um and i think what is being proposed with option number one here is that's partially true for existing volumes, but if you try to provision a new volume using the existing storage class, that may not function correctly. Uh, and that is alarming to me. Are there any other options that were considered? So we can go back and check because uh, we added these parameters. Uh, uh, by our own it was not uh, a pm requirement or any customer requirement so uh, we never removed them so now we need to go back to the customer and then uh, figure out are they using these parameters really because when you have a right. good it's available and if they are no longer using it and, and then we can literally drop it because data store name is not that durable anybody can change that name and it can break the entire system so why would a customer use that in the so production environment speaking from like the cases that we have seen uh customers do actually use data uh, data store name in storage class it's not it was supported and it's one way for the customers to provision like split their their like as long as the data stores are shared with all the 
all the ESXi host. It's one way for the customers to use different data store for different workloads. So customers do use actually like the data store name in the because in the in the storage class because generally the cloud config has just one data store no, name and then the storage class configuration allows the customers to change the data store name. Oh, okay, so then it is good information for us. We thought nobody is using it, so that information will be useful. And is anybody using a visa and raw policy? I guess nobody must be using it because we have a rich feature set available with the storage policy name parameter. Then uh, it doesn't make sense to use the raw vSAN policy parameters. So I'm not aware of anybody using raw vSAN uh, parameters. Um, but uh, we do see um, uh, a lot of the data store name get used in storage class. And I think the main reason is uh, uh, SPBM. Uh, most of the feature set is targeted directly at vSAN. And so even though it works for selecting a regular data store, people maybe look at that and think, oh, uh, because I'm not using vSAN, I should use this other parameter, even though they could use it. Okay. Then let us uh, uh, try to migrate um, uh, and support the data store parameter. And the uh, last parameter left is the disk format. Uh, basically, it is thin, thick, and zero thick, but that is also now driven by the storage policy. So SPBM is now enhanced to take this object reservation space. With that, we can control how you want to provision a volume with a thick, thick, or thin, no, zero thick. So is, is any customer using that parameter too? Sorry, disk. what was the name of that parameter? Disk, disk format. Thick, uh, thick disk, thin disk, zero thin. disk format. Yeah, and I think uh, people are using it actually. This this format in the storage class. Okay. But there is no way we can translate it with the uh, SPBM policy name. So now the new CNS uh, uh, APIs, uh, they only accept the policy name as a parameter. So there is no way we can uh, use the disk format. Data store, we can still do. We can do the conversion and uh, we can translate it to the URL and supply that, but this format will not be possible with the new. So we might be over time, but I think we can maybe brainstorm a bit uh, and, and discuss uh, elsewhere or at the next meeting. Yes, sure, sure. Okay, uh, feel free to bring it back to the SIG if you want further discussion. Uh, I I think we, we should do better than option one at the very least. It sounds like there are users that are using these existing uh, parameters. So if we could get a proper migration story, uh, that would be good. So once you have a conclusion, please come back to the SIG and let us know where you ended. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we're over time. We'll move the rest of the items to the next meeting. Thank you very much. And we'll reconvene in two weeks. Take care.